This lesson should give you a very soft introduction to the world of object-oriented programming. Here we are only going to look at the basics of classes and objects, but in future lessons we will unpack and explore everything you should know about objects. In object-oriented programming languages, we use pieces of executable code called objects to create our applications. You have used objects in previous lessons. Every time you placed a component like an edit or a button on a form, you used an object. Every form that you have used before is also an object. In this lesson, we are going to learn how objects are structured and we will also look at some terminology relating to objects. To make this lesson really easy to understand, I will compare programming objects with real-life objects like cars, cell phones or tables and chairs. All objects in general can be described by their characteristics. We refer to an object's characteristics as attributes. The attributes define how an object looks and what it contains. In general, all objects can also perform actions. We refer to these actions as the behavior of the object. The behavior of an object defines what an object can do. Let's look at this by using a real-life object as an example. I'm going to use a car as an example. A car is an object. To explain to someone how a specific car looks, you must explain the attributes of the car. The attributes will be the things like the engine capacity, the number of wheels, whether it has a roof rack or not, and its color of course. To describe to someone what actions this car can perform, you must describe the car's behaviors. This includes how the car can be started, how to stop the car, how it accelerates, and how to turn to the left or right. Now with all this in mind, let's see how programming objects like components compare to this. I will use an edit as an example. So when you add an edit to your program, we refer to it as an object. To describe to the compiler how to create the edit, you must describe the edit's attributes. An edit's attributes are described through its properties. These attributes or properties can be the edit's name, width, text, color and so on. All the properties that you set in the object inspector for an edit are the edit's attributes. To perform actions on an edit, you instruct the compiler to execute that edit's behaviors. An edit's behaviors are executed through its methods. The behaviors of an edit can be methods like set, focus, clear, show or hide. As you can see, programming concepts can be very easy to understand if you use real life analogies to compare them. However, before you can build a car, you must first draw up a plan for it. This plan must define how the car must look. The plan is not the physical car yet. You can't start or drive the car that is drawn on the plan. It only represents what the car will look like. After the plan is finalized, you can create as many cars as you like from this single plan. The plans for real life objects are called blueprints. Programmers also create plans before creating programming objects. That is done with code. The plan for a programming object is called a class. The class definitions of the components we use, like the edit and the button, are stored in libraries of code called units. In other words, the Delphi creators defined a button class and an edit class in unit libraries. The names of these classes start with a capital T, like T-Edit or T-Button. The T indicates that the class represents a type. The code that the Delphi creators wrote for the t-edit class is placed in its own unit. You cannot see that code, but you can see which properties and methods belong to a component. The plan for our car will be called something like t-car. On this plan, I will specify that a car has wheels, a color, it can start, stop, turn left or right, and so on. After I finalize my plan, any programmer that has access to the unit that contains my blueprint can create one or more cars from it by following the plan. When a programmer creates a car from my blueprint, we refer to it as an instance of the class. We also refer to an instance of a class as an object. When you place the first instance of the t-edit class on a form, the instance is normally called edit1. The first instance of our t-car class will therefore be called car1. I can however create more instances of the t-car class, just like I can add more instances of the t-edit class on a form. If I create a second instance, it will look similar to the first instance, because they are constructed from the same blueprint. 
The name of the second instance of the tcar class will be car2. I can create many more instances from the same class, like a car3. All my instances are created from the same plan, so they will all look the same. I can however go and repaint car2 to red. When I do that, it does not change the colors of the other instances, only the color of car2 changes. I can also go and repaint car3 to yellow. This does not change the color of any of the other instances. It also doesn't influence the default attributes of any new instances that I create in the future. The same principles apply to programming objects like edits. If you add more than one instance of an edit component on a form, you can change their properties individually. For example, you can change edit 1's color to blue, edit 2 to red, and edit 3 to yellow. Let's look at these concepts in a Delphi application. Here I have a new Delphi application. I do not have any components on the form yet. I will first add a single edit on the form. So, I click on the edit picture in the component palette. The edit in the component palette represents a class called tEdit. I then move my mouse pointer to the form and click where I want to place the edit. There, I just created an edit object from the tEdit class. If you look at the combo box at the top of the object inspector, you can see that this edit object is called edit1. But next to the name, you can also see that edit1 was created or instantiated from a class called tEdit. Let me add the second instance of the tEdit class on the form. This instance is named Edit2. Here I can see that it was instantiated from the same class as Edit1. I can also add a third instance of the tEdit class on the form. This instance is named Edit3. And here I can see that it was instantiated from the same class as edit1 and edit2. All these edits look the same because they were created from the same class called tEdit. I can now go and change edit1's color to blue. As you can see, this will not affect the colors of the other two edits. I can also change edit2's color to red and then edit3's color to yellow. The color property as well as other properties can be seen in the object inspector, but we cannot see the code that the Delphi creators used to create the edit class. I demonstrated that you can change the color of one instance without changing the colors of other instances. That is because you are not changing the blueprint when changing a color of an instance. So, if you add a new edit instance on your form, you still get it as it was originally defined in the class. Here, I add a new instance and it looks the same as the other edits before I change their colors. Like I said before, this is just an introduction of the terminology and the structure of objects. You will learn a lot more in future lessons. In the next lesson, I will explain the structure of a form's unit. I'll speak to you again in lesson 26.